Murthy, on the basis of Government of India Act of 1858, I will explain certain topics. Please pay attention. See, if I talk about the Indian subcontinent, the Indian subcontinent should be understood into two segments. One is the British princely states, sorry, British provinces, and naturally the princely states. For the princely states, please remember the root problem of the 1857 revolt was to be identified as the grievances of the princely states. So thereby, British expansion territorial policy of expansion was abandoned. British promised to put an end. Put an end to the policies or policy of annexation and expansion that means technically speaking doctrine of lapse was abandoned let us understand the british what is the arrangement of the british provinces the british provinces previously under the company rule taken over or incorporated under crown rule right now another diagram let us understand the British polity and governance was the example of constitutional monarchy. Probably you are accustomed to the term. If not, don't worry, we will explain. That means the crown was the nominal head. That means decision taken in the name of crown. That means symbolically crown is the fountain head of all authority. authority. But who actually creates these decisions, law making forces? Parliament. So here let us understand the British polity and governance. So at the top we have crown. Beneath the crown we have the parliament, the British parliament that is known as Westminster model. Within the parliament that is the legislature there is the British cabinet. In Indian counterpart that is known as council of ministers, British cabinet. Now within the British cabinet there will be a particular minister that is known as the secretary of state for India. Where is he stationed? London of course. Westminster, Westminster Abbey that is in London. Secretary of State for India in London. Now this minister is a member of the British cabinet. He will be enforcing the rights, exercising his rights through the Governor General of India. Now Governor General of India will be exercising his responsibility through the governors slash lieutenant governors as the case may be now you understand the chain of hierarchy governors or lieutenant governors for each of the provinces as the case may be governor is responsible to the governor general of india governor general of india will be enforcing the directives of secretary of state for india that is housed in london secretary of state for india is the member of british cabinet british cabinet is responsible to the parliament and the parliament takes the decision in the name of the crown this structure is applicable for the british provinces what about the princely states I have already discussed they are promised against future annexation. They did not have to follow this chain of hierarchy. They communicated with or directly with another position created that is the Governor General of India also known as Viceroy. This position was created to communicate directly with the princely states. That means they were sovereign authorities. So Viceroy is a position created Governor General of uh, India will be holding another position that is Viceroy. Princely states do not have to follow the chain of hierarchy and also the princely states are to give away only limited rights. For example, external communication, war, external relationship, communication, war, certain areas they have to give up or else in the other issues they will enjoy sovereignty. Viceroy will be directly communicating with the crown as the, literally Viceroy means Vice King. Make this diagram, spend some time Make sure the concept is clear. I have got who appointed Viceroy? Governor General of India is the Viceroy. Gangadhar is the Shaktiman. Do not get confused. <laughs> it was problematic for Jaikal. It should not be for you. 